I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. A couple of things here I wanted to bring out to your attention here this evening. Uh, Russian Insider has uh, reported that the State Department carries out layoffs under Rex Tillerson there, uh, actually firing the seventh floor called uh, also the shadow government. Uh, according to this uh, report here, Rex Tillerson is on his first overseas trip as Secretary of State. His aides laid off staff at the State Department on Thursday. Much of the seventh floor staff who worked for the Deputy Secretary of State for Management and Resources and Counselor's Offices were told today that their services were no longer needed. Uh, big bold on there. It's happening. Of course, you know what they're talking about is the uh, draining the swamp. Uh, that's what the uh, part of the title is here. The great draining begins. Trump purges State Department seventh floor shadow government uh, is what the article states right here by uh, Rudy uh, Penko, who actually wrote this article. It says, why is this significant? Because the seventh floor is known as the home to the powerful, high-ranking State Department officials who did everything in their power to shield Hillary Clinton from justice. As the New York Post reported last October, the FBI also released a summary of an interview that revealed a cabal of state that oversaw the email releases, a powerful group of very high-ranking state officials that some referred to as the seventh floor group or as the shadow government. This group met every Wednesday afternoon to discuss every uh, to discuss everything Clinton related to FOLA, excuse me, FOIA congressional inquiries. Now that was written by the New York Post. Uh, that statement there that was inside the Russian Insider's paper. So as it looks like it is beginning, Donald Trump is ready to drain some of that swamp there, and it seems also that he's getting pretty testy there with the uh, media and has no fear of calling them out. CNN shaking his head with them, BBC, all kinds of nice things he has to say about these news agencies, but he loves to refer to them all as fake. In fact, he has a new terminology for CNN, very fake news. You cannot help but see the humor in some of this, but I'm sure a lot of these news organizations are not very appreciative of his comments there. Can't wait to see how all this is going to play out. Another thing I wanted to bring to your attention, Sputnik News is reporting, Russia-China boost strategic ties instead of creating confrontational groups there. I thought that was kind of interesting there. Both these men toasting looks like two cups of sake. Uh, very, both of them seem to be very happy. Uh, no doubt, maybe had a, one or two many of those uh, sakis before they decided to take the picture. Russia and China should support each other in the current uncertainty of international relations, Chinese Foreign Minister, uh, excuse me, Minister of Foreign Affairs Wang Yi said during a meeting with Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov. Sputnik China spoke to the international relations experts uh, Feng Yang, uh, Yang in an interview about the importance of this cooperation. The expert from the Institute of International Studies on Funded University, Feng and Yang Yin, said that in the context of international problems in a number of developing countries, turbulence in regional security, changes in international rules and regulations, the situation in the world today is most difficult since the Cold War. Uh, Russia and China have a comprehensive, comprehensive strategic partnership, so it is important for them to strengthen cooperation in all fields and areas first of all. That kind of lets you know that uh, Russia, China coming together, so therefore, if anybody else decides to turn against one or the other, they may end up forming an alliance much like that of NATO. And if that were to happen and you get one covers the other back, if the other is drawn into a conflict, they may end up drawing in other nations that are like-minded as themselves, such as Iran uh, and others like Pakistan. Even though Pakistan does have a, a pretty much an agreement with the United States, we do know that Russia has recently done military drills with Pakistan, even Slovenia, close ties, Belarus, and the list goes on and on. They could forge a very similar treaty of that of NATO. That would be interesting to see if that plays out. One thing in closing here I wanted to share with you, everybody is very familiar about the uh, uh, six nations that Trump put a temporary ban on while they could get a, a grip on what's going on um, with the people that are coming into the United States. And again, can't say as I blame President Trump for this, although how, uh, I do see that this has also affected a lot of people that uh, no doubt are innocent and that do need to be able to come into the United States to, uh, to escape 
the, uh, the travesties that are happening in other parts of the world, the Syrian refugee crisis, etc. But I know Trump is trying to prevent uh, coming uh, of terrorists from coming into the country. So I, I, I understand, but at the same time, while this is going on, a lot of people don't realize some of those countries, some of those same six countries have banned Israelis, anyone holding an Israeli passport from entering into their countries. In fact, 16 nations, We've mentioned this before on Israeli News Live, but we've never mentioned the actual Arabic nations that have banned any Israeli citizens holding Israeli passports from entering their country. So I figured I would go ahead and name those countries for you. On your screen, you can see it. Algeria, Bangladesh, Brunei, Iran, Iraq, Kuwait, Lebanon, Libya, Malaysia, Oman, Pakistan, Saudi Arabia, Sudan, Syria, United Arab Emirates, and Yemen. And I will tell you as well, this is what's really troubling for us. Israeli News Live, We've had some very prominent journalists uh, that have been on the ground inside Syria on numerous occasions that would have been more than happy to be guests on our program. But because we are Israeli News Live associated with Israel, they had to decline, and some of them very regretfully so. We've even had RT journalists that would be willing to come on Israeli News Live, but it puts their uh, job at risk if they were to appear on Israeli News Live when they're traveling into places such as Syria. We wish things would change on these type of things here. Very sad to see these things. Very sad to see there is so much animosity towards Israel. And uh, we'll be doing a special broadcast coming up here in the very near future. My wife will as well on her channel, Rise Up Children of God, about the growing anti-Semitism coming against the Jewish people all over the world. Not just the Jews, but the, the Hebrews, I should say, the Israelis, the, the ones that are both the house of Israel as well as the house of Judah. And what's sad is here we are at the very day and hour when the time has almost arrived for Israel to actually recognize her Messiah and so many Christians today turning against the Jewish people because of all the false propaganda that has been spewed out there on the internet by a Jesuit conspiracy against the homeland of Israel. I'm Stephen Benoon, you're watching Israeli News Live.